kids, kids, one of the most uh, difficult tasks that we have in our lives is to raise kids. It's a tremendous responsibility. Uh, and a part of the responsibility is to try to at least make sure that our kids will be successful. So therefore the question is, how do we raise successful kids? It's a question. It's a good question. So how do we raise successful kids? Uh, in order to raise successful kids, we need to balance between our need to defend and to wrap the child and the recognition that he must have independence. Independence, pay attention, that's especially for you. When one of those factors is overwhelming the other, your kid is not going to be successful. Don't blame him, blame yourself. Yes, you must protect your kid. And yes, yes, you must give him ways to define himself through independence. Independence, self-definition. You have to define yourself. So you have to uh, balance between freedom and your responsibility to support the child. And mainly to do whatever you do and then a job more. Whatever you do is good, but then walk the extra mile. And we don't know sometimes what damage we cause our kids <clears throat> by applying on our kids our own unresolved issues, our own frustrations of what we thought we could or wanted to do and we didn't because we were misguided, we didn't have the right tools and so on and so forth. So therefore we try to live our lives through our kids. And there is a, that's, that's almost borderline a crime. A person should not do that. You have your chances and now it's their chance. Your job is not to live through them. Your job is to provide them with the necessary tools to succeed. And it is all about balance. Not the base, balance. So what can you do? So first of all, dream. 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 Dream, dream, dream. You know the song? It's an old, old song, Everly Brothers, I think. Are you saying yes? You weren't even born yet. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, you need to dream with your kids. A kid needs to have somebody to believe in him, to believe in his abilities, to believe that he can do it. A kid needs somebody to push him and encourage him to continue. Don't worry, continue, it's okay. I know you can do it. Dream with him by yourself and dream with him out loud. So he would hear, again, not your unresolved issues according to his abilities. <clears throat> as long as we're talking about a dream of the child and not your dream, it's okay. But when it's your dreams, it's no good. We do this terrible thing to our kids. Not every girl is supposed to be a, a doctor. What happens if this girl really wants to become a dancer? Let her. Then we say right away, huh, but you're not going to make any money. Or she wants to become an artist or a writer. Without, you're not going to make any money. So what are you doing is, is you destroying the kid by implanting him a method of making decisions not out of common sense, but rather through fear. When you make decisions out of fear, the same thing as you make decisions out of anger, it's doomed to fail. So do, it's to make this cheshmon, so it's not true. It's not how much money you make, it's how much bracha there is in your money. And if this child would learn to deny himself or herself because of money, what are you teaching your child? 
Money is not something you sell yourself to. I call it spiritual prostitution. You can't do that. Money is not a reason to go to do something. What does your kid want to do? He wants to be a painter. So send him to painting school. I didn't say oh, artist. He wants to paint a house. I don't know. He likes to paint, so he'll become a painter. You know how much money they make out of painting rural houses? Everybody wants a clean job. Well, there's nothing wrong. Your kid wants to become a mechanic. I know somebody. He wants to become a mechanic. He loves cars. He loves machines, engines. He spends, oh, Shanda, Shanda, mechanic. We're not going to be able to get you a shit look. You're going to be like a, 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 a grease monkey. We're going, I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with becoming a mechanic. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Nothing wrong with that. But... It's society, what they would say, what the neighbors say, who cares what the neighbors say? So that's, that's the thing. Uh, if you're going to encourage the dreams of your child and so on and so forth, that support in which you're going to provide them is going to teach your children and give them this, the, the necessary uh, tools to be brave, to dare. If your kid would never dare to do anything, he would basically live his life and become a very crooked person. Because he's, instead of exploring in positive things, he would explore in other fields that you don't want him to explore. They would dare to see if they're worth something in areas that, that you don't want him to do that. So let him dare. Would you rather your son or your daughter dare to explore their abilities in, in, in school or in, in a job or to dare to do drugs. You need courage to do drugs because it's, 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 it's just a kind of stupidity, you know. So if he's not going to dare there, he's going to dare there. Encourage him to do the right thing. Let the kids... By doing so, allowing the kids, when you let them dare, you're allowing the kids to reach goals, to improve, and that sets a, 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 a path through their lives where they would understand that, that that's the path to go. Achievement, progression, improvement, and that will be the goal to their life. That will be successful. That means raising kids to success. Another point. Encourage your kids to become independent. Stop being this mother who wraps the kids with sweaters all the time, who the kids is 20 years old. Oh, where are you going? Where are you coming? What are you doing? In Israel at 18, you won't go to the army already. Here in America, it's like, it's like crazy, crazy, crazy. That's why the bunch of, how do you call them in Yiddish? Wussies. Don't do the dishes. I'll do the dishes. Dad, I'm doing the dishes. Come independent. Oh, you can't go on vacation. It's far. But mommy, I'm going to Arizona. I'm flying. Oh, my goodness. You're flying alone? Yes, I'm flying alone. Your mothers or your parents who raise you to become anything but independent are killing you. And if you do so to your kid, it's bad. Let the kid have some independence. He needs to show responsibility. But you need to know where the kid is just for, you know, for security, just in case something happens, God forbid. So you know, okay, where are you going? I'm going there, okay, bye. He will not become independent. He's not going to be able to make decisions. He's not going to make decisions. It's going to be a failure. Maybe just like you. You can't do that. Let them become independent. Encourage them to become independent. Put overprotective family, parents destroy your child. Let them take responsibility from a young age. On their school, the scores in school, and as I always told you, about errands to do at home. Every kid should understand that he has a job at home. Do not get a maid. Don't get a cleaning service. Because if you have a son, that he's the prince, <laughs> Prince Ali Ababua, 
Prisali Gananate Ali Ababwa. Right? He doesn't do nothing. He don't do nothing. He doesn't clean the toilets. He doesn't do his laundry. He, mommy does everything for him. Mommy cooks for him, this for him, everything for him. Mommy loves a baby, and daddy loves you too, right? Even though I hate the Pink Floyd, that's a terrible song about an overprotective mother that ruined her son. A kid like this will grow to be a horrible husband who doesn't do a thing at home, who's a tyrant, a punk, a lazy punk, who won't do anything, who's not going to help his wife, and he's going to have a miserable life. And you know what? It's all because of you. You have three, four kids at home? Good, terrific. Everybody does something. One does the bathrooms, one does the, the this, one does that. And you can get off your rear end also and do something. Show them an example. You need to do that. You need to go away. The best thing for American kids was if there was a draft. Well, there isn't. So you need to draft yourself. Parents like that because parents are having an anxiety separating from the kids. But they're not realizing that they're ruining the kids out of their fear to be alone because they don't want to be alone. They don't want to be with each other, a husband and wife. So they do whatever they can, even sometimes messing up the kids' chances to get married just so they won't be alone with each other or with themselves. And you are doing an unreversible, I mean, it will be almost irreversible damage to your kid, taking away his independence and his ability to do things on his own. He needs to be responsible. And responsibility comes with independence. Because if I'm going to make all the decisions for you, you're never going to be responsible because you never were independent. You fell in school, I don't have to give you a, I don't have to give you a, a, you know, a tutoring. You fell in school because you were sitting down on YouTube all day long. Because you're laying in bed like a punk. Get out of bed. Make a rule. You don't go upstairs to your bedroom until it's time to sleep. Until then, everybody down here. Let your kid cut the lawn. You don't need a gardener. I mean, for crying out loud, you don't live in Wyoming that you have like 400 acres to mow the lawn. You're living, I don't know, in Queens. You, you have a foot by foot of grass. Let them cut the grass. That's your job. You're a big boy. Good. Cut the grass. Shovel the snow. Take the garbage out. Help around. Don't be a bum. Parents don't want to do that. And they're ruining their kids over it. And it's going to be a vicious cycle until something will happen. That's why people get divorced and so on and so forth. They get divorced because many times they want, especially boys, why? Because they, they were in expectation that the woman they're going to marry is going to do to them what mommy did to them. And she says no. And he said, what do you mean no? And they have a problem. Or to a girl who doesn't know how to make an omelet. Or a boy who doesn't know how to make an omelet. Why? Because they always mommy made it or they had a maid that comes and cooks and flips the eggs and makes sandwiches and so on and so forth. No such thing in your home should not be, Mommy, where is this? Mommy, give me that. Where is it? Wherever you put it, go look for it. Terrible. This overprotectiveness of, of mothers is, is terrible what it does to the kids. It is terrible. It destroys the kids. And then you wonder. Then you will blame everybody else. Because you know what? Because you are not independent and you don't take responsibility. You're going to blame the schools, the rabbis, society, everybody but yourself. You think that you're the perfect parent giving your kid anything he peeps about. Give him two computers, three computers, five computers, send him to vacation. No! You want to go on vacation? No problem, my darling. Go work. 
However, I expect from you this. In order to raise successful kids, one needs to set clear and define boundaries with expectation to this child. You're not going to be doing this and you're not going to be doing that. In between them, do whatever you want. I expect you to try to do your best. And don't set goals like, I want you to bring me 100. No, I want you to try to do your best. I want you to work hard. There's time to play and there's time to, and to work. Because if not, that's what the child will carry to his future. Another way to, gra- another thing to raise a, a successful kid is be genuine to what you're preaching. Don't preach what you don't do. Kids will pick it up and they will dismiss anything that you say, anything that you do because you are not genuine about what you expect them to do. You don't do it yourself. Don't come up with excuse, well, I'm too lazy to do, I'm too busy to do so. No, not too busy, I'm too lazy. I don't have enough time for that. So it's not important to you. What should it be important to me? Because you know better, terrific. If you know better, why won't you do that yourself? Kids pick it up and then they push you away. And the last one is give them exceptional conditions. What does it mean? If there is a field that the child wants to develop, go with it all the way. The kids want to learn karate. Terrific. You want to learn karate? Not a problem. Let me explain to you what's involved with it. It's a very rigorous thing. Blah, 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 blah. Go with it all the way. Don't send them to some place that's going to be like just get. Make sure you get them the best teacher, the best conditions to succeed. In order to succeed, you need, you need, you need ground for it to ferment, to grow. Give him the proper uh, 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 growing conditions so you can grow. Give him the best conditions. Give him the best teachers. Help him to invest in his, let's say, training until. He reaches his goal. Tell the kid, listen, you're starting this. Argument sake, let's say he starts karate. You're not going to, we're going to go. You should know, you're making a commitment. Until you get a black belt. Until you get a black belt. I don't want to hear, I'm quitting. Until you get a black belt. Not okay. You know what? I'm not competing anymore. I know somebody, he, he was excellent in judo. Excellent. It was a real talent in judo. And to have a young kid interested in the art of it and not in the competition of it was, was, was a tremendous thing. It's really... And all of a sudden, I think he got to like purple bed or something like this. I don't want to do this anymore. Why? I don't want to do it anymore. Why? I, I lost it. You didn't lose it. Now you're going to go. You made a commitment, you're going to go. I spent all this money, all this time, and you knew it. Now you're going to finish. Get to a black belt, then we finish. Encourage him. That's why I said, send the boundaries from the beginning. So he'll know what to do. Give him the best teachers and encourage him to go. He will go. He'll successfully he'll achieve. If you allowing your kid to stop in the middle or stopping your kid in the middle for whatever reason, you're teaching him not to finish the business. And that is a very bad thing. So we talked about defining success, we talked about successful with kids, success with kids today, and all of this for me to do is to beg you peace and wish you Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.